Good morning. Beautiful, beautiful day out there. Oh, my. Makes us so grateful for all that God has given us. Uh, it, it just sort of overwhelms me to think that he cared enough to give us all these things that are, surround us and make our lives so comfortable. I have a few announcements today. Uh, first of all, the attendance pads are over on this side, on the street side. So if you'll put your name on there and pass them across, we'd appreciate that. And uh, just a quick reminder to those of you on the finance, property, and endowment committees, you're not meeting this month. Ha, ha, ha yay, you get a third Tuesday free. Uh, and deacons in session are not meeting this month. You get a fourth Tuesday free, all right? Um, Wendy and Veronica are back from Turkey. They have, uh, neither of them are here today. They're out of town with their families, not together, but with, with their families. And uh, they will be sharing with us real soon uh, in August on a Sunday afternoon. And uh, some of their adventures are pretty incredible. I was just sharing with Kay uh, that they, Ver Veronica brought a book back that's the testimonies of the people working in that church in Turkey. And it's just hard for me to imagine that 2022, and because they're Christian, they have to watch their back every move they make. Uh, I, you know, we just don't, I, I don't think we start to appreciate the freedom that we have until you read these testimonies of what's going on. So I hope you'll mark August 7th to uh, come hear their story. And we're passing the book around. Uh, it's, it's incredible. It will make you look at life a lot different. Veronica's comment when she came in the office was, I came back a changed person. And uh, just reading the book is enough to make some changes, too. We have a uh, memorial, oh, yeah, let's do that. Memorial service coming up uh, next Sunday afternoon at 3 o'clock. Memorial service for Howard Stephen will be in the Fellowship Hall, and there'll be a light buffet afterwards. And then the following Sunday, or I'm sorry, the following Saturday will be the service for Lynn Thomas. Birthdays this week. Rob Schleff has a birthday on Tuesday. But poor Rob and Priscilla, they're in the Cotswold in England right now, hiking from one place to the other. And uh, so, you know, we'll wish him a happy birthday when he gets back. But he is still working. You know, we still send him the bulletin. He posts it to the website, even though they're out wandering around. Um, but Mike will be posting it on the service online this week and for a couple of them. If you are interested in providing salads or cookies for either of the memorial services, see Ruth or Judy after worship today and uh, let them know because they're working on that. All right, Pastor Bob is going to call us to worship. Oh, I missed a birthday before he does that, and he's not going to do it anyway. Cheryl is. <laughs> uh, Brenda Stewart has a birthday on Friday. So happy birthday to Brenda a little bit early. Good morning, church. Good morning, um, this morning I'll be reading from the uh, Passion Bible, which I think is a beautiful um, lyrical uh, sound for the Psalms particularly. This one says, the heavens belong to our God they are his alone. But he has given us the earth and put us in charge. Dead people cannot praise the Lord, but we can. Those who sink to the silence of the grave can no longer give glory to God, but we can. So let's praise the Lord. Let's begin now and let it go on until eternity is done. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Would everyone please stand for our first hymn.
my feet upon a rock. Put a new song in my heart, in my heart, alone. Have mercy on me. then after that, we're going to go into prayer. So let's begin with praise. Any praises this week? Yes, Lydia. I just want to thank God for all the prayers and that my surgery went well. So mm -hmm. I just give God the glory. And also um, for my son, James, that just recently was able to purchase a car. So thank you, Jesus. Hey, that's <laughs> awesome. That is great. Other praises that we can celebrate together. Yes, Nadine. I would like to thank everyone for their prayers for my husband, Norman. He's doing better. He's just, he's fighting double vision right now. Mm. And so hopefully that will go away the doctor says, but if it doesn't, they make special classes. So he just wants to get in the car and ride his bike again. <laughs> Understandable. Thank you. Would someone pray for Norman when it comes to our time of prayer? Thank you, Joyce. Other praises, celebrations? All right, let's turn our attention also to prayer. What requests do we have this morning that God has put on your heart? Maybe it's a close friend, maybe it's your family member, yes. Okay. I'd like to, the congregation to pray for a couple named um, Moby, his real name is Richard, but they call him Moby, and Christine. They are homeless. Um, she just had a stroke, and she's in St. John's Hospital 
Moby is sleeping in his car in the parking lot over there. Mm. Um, he was not paid for eight weeks by a local business owner, along with a lot of other employees, so they were, you know, um, evicted from their apartment, and life is just really, really hard right now for them. A um, lot of reasons, and there's no place to put her, their insurance, her insurance won't pay for her to go to long-term care, so I don't know how a person in a wheelchair lives in a car. But we'll keep working on solving that, but I'll take that prayer when the time comes. All right, thank you, Carrie. Other requests, Joyce? I don't know if I can get through this. <laughs> My sister Frances is dying today, oh, and uh, we thought she was dying yesterday and the day before, but she hasn't yet, so she's, she's really in Lord's hands, and uh, I just need prayer. Okay. Who will pray for Joyce and her family and also her sister as she goes? Thank you, Cheryl. Other requests, so I'm sorry, Joyce, that's hard. Other requests? Yes, thank you, um, this is not a prayer request, but an update. Um, I, you had so generously put my friend Matt Stout on your prayer list and uh, the, the Lord has now called him home. Mm. Um, he scumbled to the cancer, and uh, so it's a finished story now, at least on this side of the planet. Yeah. Thank you. Great. Thank you, God. Yeah, we got one up here, Larry. Thank you much for letting me speak. I um, <clears throat> am a senior, and uh, about two years ago, I moved here to be with my son, where he thought I was going to be with him. <laughs> and I have been with him. It's, it's been a rough road, but it's calmed down now. But I would like my son and his girlfriend to be prayed for. They absolutely do not want to hear Jesus name in the mm. house and it's uh, it's just about heartbreaking because I hear all kinds of this uh, real hard rock music and my son is into that he's an extremely good guitarist but mm. I don't he's never played for me in church mm. and I would like that very much but I'm concerned about their um, way to, to take Jesus and to get him in their lives. Mm -hmm. But um, I think I missed a lot when he was growing up. He's adopted. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, he might have been better if I had been a better witness. But I'm mm -hmm. not sure of that, and I'm trying to leave that with the Lord. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Who, what's your son's name? Son's name. Oh, my son's name is Jeff Donovan. Jack. Jeff Donovan. Who will pray for Jack and his girlfriend? Jeff. Yes. Jeff, I'm sorry. I thought it was Jeff. Jeff and his girlfriend, that they might be open to the gospel. Thank you. Any other requests? Let's take our request to the Lord. If you said you would pray for someone, please. Um, lift the prayer up, lift your hand up, and we'll bring a microphone to you so we can pray each of those requests. And then following it, I'll close this up with prayer. Heavenly Father, how can we thank you for a place to worship safely, in comfort, without stress? I lift up Moby and Christine to you this morning. Yes, God. 
they found me because they wandered into a church and asked someone to pray for them. Mm. And Lord, you direct our steps, you always do, even when we don't know. But I know they're vulnerable to your Holy Spirit right now. And I can't make up a story that equals the rest of what they're going through right now. So Lord, be in the midst of that car mm -hmm. and give them hope. Without yes. hope, we all perish. And so just send the right people, the right resources, so that they can find peace in their lives and find you first, of course. But we all have needs that relate to comfort and food and shelter and all the things that add peace to our lives. And so they don't have that right now. Thank you, Father, for what you want to do in our lives. Help us to be open to receiving it and recognizing the opportunities to serve you while we serve others. And I pray in your son's name and thank you for him. Amen. Father, we thank you this morning for bringing us all together. I thank you for all the answered prayers we have been having. We just praise you, Lord, and give you all the glory for all the goodness that you are doing in our, our church community and in our lives. Mm. Thank you for this beautiful day, and I thank you for um, all the people who, who come and uh, join us, either on the television or, or however they watch it. But um, I just thank you that we do have those available to the people that are at home, and we just pray for the people at home for strength and courage. And Lord, we want to lift up uh, Sister Frances. Mm -hmm. Father God, you know her condition, Lord, uh, and um, you know the days, uh, the days that her days are, one, are numbered, Lord, and we just pray that you would touch her heart, Lord. Uh, let her hear your sweet voice. Just give her peace and comfort, Lord. Uh, let her uh, understand that when she gets with you, She's going to be all healed and all well, and she's going to be filled with love. And uh, just connect your two spirits together, Lord. Um, give her peace and joy in her final time, because I know that she's going to have a lot of peace and joy in the future. Mm. And I just lift up the family, Joyce, and uh, all the, the whole family. Father, uh, give them strength and hope. Um, Holy Spirit, be with them, walk with them, encourage and lift them up. And uh, we celebrate that Frances is going to be with you soon, and she won't be suffering anymore. Amen. We praise you. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Yes, Jesus. Heavenly Father, we lift up Norm Makeham to you this morning. He's been suffering with this leftover COVID, secondary, whatever it is. And Lord, his eyesight is not good for him. He needs to have the balance so that he can walk and be cheerful. And I just pray, Lord, that you'll heal his body and his mind, give him peace in this whole thing, and tell him that there is going to be an end to it. And I pray these things in Jesus' precious name. Father, we lift up Jeff and his girlfriend this morning. Lord, uh, we understand they don't know you, but we ask that you would just put someone in their way that can help guide them, help direct them, help the Holy Spirit reach their hearts, touch their hearts to draw them to you, to uh, come into a, a saving relationship with you, Lord. And we know that all things are possible and that you answer prayer of righteous people. So, Lord, we lay his situation in, in your hands and his girlfriend's situation, that you will touch it and you will work in that situation, that you will comfort his mother as she struggles with uh, all of the emotions that come with this, and, Lord, we just lay this all in your precious hands. Thank you so much, Lord. In your name we pray. Mm. 
Father God, in the, our bulletin, we have several people listed for health concerns and life challenges. And Lord, there are some that are very sick and some that are not so sick, and they just need help, Lord. Everybody on this whole page needs our help, needs your help. And I just pray, Lord, that you'll move the Holy Spirit to each and every one of them and help them get well and help them get back to church. I pray in Jesus' name. Yes, Jesus. Our gracious God, we bless your name. Lord, we adore you. We love you. Holy, holy are you. Lord, as we bring our request to you, help us to remember who you are. Thank you for your faithfulness to your people throughout centuries. Thank you that you are a compassionate God, a God of hesed kindness for your people and for this world. Lord, we give all the requests that we have brought to your feet this morning. And Lord, we lift up the people that we have placed in a box with their name on it, on a card that we pray for each week. We pray victory over those names. That we pray for answered prayer over, their name, over those names. And we thank you, God, that you're moving in each of those circumstances. Lord, we lift up our world God, the, the movement of Russia and the Ukraine, Lord, we lift up to you. I think we've fallen asleep in praying for that situation until it smacks us again in our face. And so, Lord, we pray your peace upon those two countries. And we pray for the people, Lord, for people's hearts in both of those countries, that they would recognize you are our peace. You are the Holy One that can make a difference there. And Lord, we lift up other situations that are occurring in our city, in our county, in our nation, and in the world. We lift ourselves and we lift those requests to you. We come before you laying all of these requests at your feet, Jesus. And we pray the way you have taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and glory forever. Amen. Pray with me. Gracious God, we lift up your word. Holy Spirit, we pray that you would breathe life into this passage so that we, it would come alive to us. And we pray, Holy Spirit, that you would write it on the tablet of our hearts. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Wow. I could, I could talk for probably two hours um, on this passage. There is so much meat to it. And I'm hoping that we'll get some of that meat this morning. Jesus refers to the seventh commandment. If you look at all the commandments, it's the seventh one that says, do not commit adultery. Now, for, for Jewish people at that time, they... The children, especially boys, went to Hebrew school. 
And, one, and they learned the Torah. But one of the first things they learned was the Ten Commandments. Now think of your Christian education. If some of you went to a church when you were a child, most likely you learned those Ten Commandments right, right off the bat, right? Am I right? Thank you. Um, and so Jesus starts by saying, and we're going to see this throughout. Um, what are we doing? Beatitudes. Sermon on the Mount. We see this happen over and over again on the Sermon on the Mount, that Jesus brings up a commandment. But when he does, we must remember one thing. Two things. One, the first thing that Jesus does when he brings up those commandments is a word called hyperbole. If you've never heard of it, that simply means to exaggerate, to make it bigger so that people really understand. And so Jesus is using hyperbole when he says, if your eye causes you to lust after a woman, and lust in your heart, then you've already committed adultery. And then it says, gouge out your eye. Now, for a moment, think about this, and these, just these two things. If we were to, every time we looked at an opposite sex and had visions of going further, we'd gouge out our eye. Most of us would be blind. Okay, I'm just being honest here. Secondly, it says if your hand causes you to sin, what do they do? Chop it off. So basically, if that happened for us, we would be like this. Because after you did the hand, you'd probably go further up, right? It's like a, it's like a, a zombie movie. I don't know if anybody watches those. I do at times. But zombies just kind of come like this. And you don't know what they're going to do to the people they're coming to. Basically, Jesus exacts, exaggerates, exasperates, no, exaggerates the reality that these things cause problems. And Jesus goes on to say that the key to all of this is not about memorizing the Ten Commandments, even that's good. It's not about keeping the commandments, which is good, but it goes to the heart of the matter. You have committed adultery in your heart. You have, con you, have con you have conceived sin in your heart. And Jesus is saying to those that are there, listen, following me is more than behavior. Not that behavior is wrong, but what he's saying is, it starts in our heart. One example of this is I was preparing. I thought of Mark 10, verses 7 through 21, 27. It's not going to be up here on the screen. But it's the story of the rich young ruler. And in Mark, it it gives an account of this, as I said, in verse, chapter 10. The rich young ruler is someone that has a lot of money. They have, he has everything he needs financially. Probably more than we can even imagine. And this rich young ruler comes up to Jesus. And he asks him, what must I do? to inherit eternal life. And the immediate response of the rich young ruler is, I have kept all the commandments. I've been a good boy. 
I've probably gone to synagogue. I'm a good boy. We can begin, we can base our relationship with God on if we have been a good boy or a good girl, right? Jesus is saying to this young man, and he says to him, you must sell all that you have and give it to the poor. The rich young ruler begins to think about that. What if Jesus said to you, I'm not saying he is, sell your house and give it to a homeless person? We can't even conceive that. But the rich young ruler is an example for each of us because Jesus is confronting the rich young ruler not by how much wealth he has, not by how much he has kept the Ten Commandments and behaved well. He's saying, look at your heart. This is a heart issue. Because what you are doing is all good, but if it really came down to it, would you do it? Would you give it all away? to follow me. This passage is getting to the heart of the matter. Jesus is wanting us to examine our hearts. And he says that if you look at a woman with lust in your eyes, or in your heart, you've committed adultery. Which, when I looked at the word lust, I decided I'm not going to just give my own interpretation of it, even though in Webster's it says lust is a great desire. It's not just simply a desire. It's a great desire. It means it gets really to the core of you. And so this last week, I, I asked a few people in our church, what do you lust for? So I took those things and put them up on the screen. Now I'm going to name the names with them as I go further. All of those who were there when I asked, you just panicked. A couple of these were wanting just a little bit more. That's understandable, right? But it can become not only a desire, but it can become a pursuit, a great desire that you begin to pursue. I, if I just had a little bit more money, if I just had a little more relief on my debt, if I didn't have the IRS, I would be way more wealthy. And so what well, folks were saying, if I just had a little bit more, I would be content. Lust brings that out. The second one, desire that's supposed to be desire for the opposite sex. Now, I, I had to think about this one. I'm like 35 now, and <laughs> well, at least I can remember when I was 35, and how this would occur for me often. I was a young buck, my testosterone was going wild, and, and it was easy to start thinking in my head, wow, maybe I can marry her. And then it moved to my heart. And then you can, I don't need to explain the rest, okay? But it can be a desire for the opposite sex no matter what age you are. I needed to confirm that. Because I thought, nah, I don't know if that's a good one to show. 
but it is. Another one was watching TV. Another one was eating chocolate or sugar. I have a confession. Vons is tricky, aren't they? They're a tricky store. You walk through the, the door on the far right, and what do you, when you walk in that door, what do you see? Pastries. I have, and I don't know if I've shared this before, but I have, let me say this, I enjoy cheesecake. And if I walk into Vaughn's through that door, I am immediately hit by cheesecake. So knowing this, I'm trying to be a believer that follows Christ, that, that does the right thing, so I walk around it. But I remember a situation in Vaughn's where I kept coming back to it. That ever happened for you? You kept coming back to it. And when you got there, you, you think, no, I can't do this. And I'll go away. It's not only a desire, but it's turning into a lust. A great desire. And so I come back the next, third time. And I think, my basket's got room. <laughs> and I pick up which I know is going to go right here. I pick up that piece of that, and even I play the game of, oh, I should just take one of those small pieces. Finally, I go, it's cheaper to get the whole big pie. <laughs> and I want to be frugal and spend my money well. And eventually, I have a cheesecake in my stomach as a result. Many of us struggle with food. And it can be for all kinds of reasons, but it becomes a lust. It becomes a drive. It becomes a pursuit. When we were watching TV, which is another one of these things, as I mentioned, we want to eat something that's sugary. And these go on and on, and I will bring the names of the people to the next time I preach. What Jesus says is that eventually it's not about if you choose or desire cheesecake. But you must in your heart think about what will be the consequence. Many of us, no matter what those lusts are, we take the next step. And we move towards sin and eventually death. I want to read James chapter 1, 14 through 15. It says, But each one is tempted when by his own evil desire he is dragged away and enticed. Basically, that means he is lustful. It also means something else, and I'll mention it. Then after the desire has conceived... It gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, gives birth to death. When I went the whole gamut of cheesecake, it was too late from keeping it from going to my waist. We often think, oh, you know what, if I... If I just give in this time, it's not going to make a big difference. But those little differences become bigger and bigger in our life. I weigh more now than I did when I was 21. I'm not going to tell you how much that was. James says in this passage which I think is an excellent passage to memorize. He says, it begins when I'm tempted. I believe it's more, than, I think there's a step before that. When I see something I like, 
All of us have desires. All of us want things in our life, and that doesn't mean desires are wrong. We're human. And all the things I put up there are not necessarily wrong. We're human. God created us the way we are. The next step is the beginning of the road downward. It's the next step begins to make it something out here begins to be a heart issue. And James says, but then you are tempted. When I did the cheesecake thing, I went away, but I was still tempted. And as I went further, it turned in more into an evil desire. Evil meaning it's not the way God desires it to be. It's an opposite. And so he says, it, it went into evil desires, he is dragged away and enticed. That means now you have gone the next step and Satan is entered in. We often don't give Satan the due that he does in our life. Satan takes a temptation, the desires, goes to the next place, and then he begins to entice us, which means debate. Debate you in. Come on in, Gordon. That desire you have, let's make it happen. And you're not a bad guy if you do. Okay. That desire you have, it's okay. Go for it. God's a gracious God, which is true. We become enticed. We become baited. The last thing I want to share about this process is how do we deal how do we deal with our desires which are normal how can we be okay with that reality but avoid avoid what happens when it becomes part of our heart how do we avoid eventually having death or being laid out because we have followed it, not necessarily death um, dying there, which actually could have happened if I ate all that, that whole cheesecake. One, be single-minded. That's not on up here. But being single-minded means we have a choice each day of what we're going to think about, what we're going to pursue, what we're going to plan. And what, God, what being single-minded is about was what Jesus was really telling the rich young ruler. Also telling him, telling the, the disciples and the group that are before him on the Sermon on the Mount, that this is a hard issue. It's about your heart. It's not about what you've memorized. It's not about that you go to church. It doesn't matter if you go to temple every time, every Sunday, Saturday. It's not about that. It's what is in our heart. And are you single-minded about Jesus Christ and having the desires of Jesus? Christ in the Sermon on the Mount is saying, I want you to want me. I want to give you my heart. And God has done that to us. He's given his heart to us through the Holy Spirit. But when we get distracted and go further with our desires, we miss the beauty of being more Christ-like. We pursue other things. We become distracted. And eventually they take a toll on our bodies. Jesus wants us every day, every day, y'all, to be single-minded, to want the presence, 
to become more and more real of the living Christ inside us. And it can only happen through the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. We need to say, Holy Spirit, keep me focused on being Christ-like. And help me when those desires occur. The second, the first one up there is recognize our desires are part of humanity. I touched on that. Pursue, which I just touched on, a Christ-like heart. Seek to embrace and live God's blessing of a pure heart. The sixth beatitude. We've moved beyond the beatitudes, and maybe you've already forgotten them. I want to remind you of one. The seventh beatitude says, Blessed are the pure in heart. How do you define your relationship with God? Do you say, I'm a follower of Jesus? Or do you say, I go to church, once in a while I'll pray, which are all good things, but mostly Jesus wants your heart. Chris, can you put, there it is. This shows Jesus fishing. That doesn't mean Ron is fishing right now. Or it doesn't mean I'm fishing right now. But Jesus, with a smile on his face, when he catches your heart, do you allow it to belong to him? Or do you want it to belong to me and let Jesus in once in a while? I believe this commandment and this word from the Sermon on the Mount is a wonderful word because it says Jesus loves you so much and he wants to give you more than cheesecake. He wants to give you joy and love. Let's pray. Gracious God, we praise you that your Sermon on the Mount is real. You preach that sermon to each of us every day. Give us ears to listen and give us a heart that pursues you, that pursues your heart above all other things. In your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the message that you just had Pastor Bob give to us, knowing that we all need to think about lots of things that he said today. And I thank you, Lord, for your blessings. I thank you that we can give back to this church. And as we leave today, help us to remember to put our offerings into the box in the back because we don't pass the plates anymore but we do put them in the back and we thank you lord that you give us that honor to do that in jesus special name amen please stand as we sing uh, for praising god
amazing, this is victory. And as you go from here, may you enjoy the heart of Christ that is in you. May you pursue it every day that you might experience the fullness of Jesus Christ. Go in his name.